Historically, eBay, like uh, any other company, uh, or most companies, would pay for the brand keyword itself, right? So if we go to Google.com now and type a whole bunch of brand names like Macy's or JCPenney's or Amazon or, or many others, many of those companies will pay Google for an ad that will take you to their website because you typed their brand name. And what's amazing is that if you look at that page that comes up, the uh, query result page, you will see that right below the ad is the free natural search that goes to that company's website because, you know, Google is a very good search engine and when you type Macy's, Google understands that you want to go to Macy's.com. When you turn off that advertising, basically almost all the traffic that came through the paid search is just substituted to the natural search. Now, again, I, I have to add the caveat, this is for eBay, for the study we did. Um, other firms were not apparently um, bidding on that keyword, so you know you didn't get an ad for Amazon or an ad for some you know other potential online marketplace or online retailer. If firms are competing for those words, at the end of the day, if that competition weren't there, people would still get to the right place because they know where they're going. And the striking thing is that in this large industry of paid search, a lot of consultants and so-called experts will tell firms you should invest in your own brand keyword because look at all the traffic it gives you. But then you have to take a step back and say, but, but wait a minute. When people came through that channel, what did they first do? They had to type in the brand keyword. And if they're typing in the brand keyword, where do you think they were going in the first place? It's not that clicking on it caused engagement. It's that the intent to engage caused people to click on it. Based on our own observations and based on the broad area of microeconomics research, because this is one of the areas of applied microeconomics, uh, the only way to truly measure the impact of paid search is to design a carefully controlled experiment. The uh, United States is comfortably divided into 210 DMAs, or direct marketing areas. We took 30% uh, of traffic, of uh, historical web traffic. In this case, it was 68, I think, uh, uh, direct marketing areas. And in those, we basically turned off paid search. And we have two variations on the control group. One was a, another group of a little over 60 DMAs that were matched to those first uh, um, the treatment group based on historical trends. But then we also did analyses where we're just taking the rest of the United States as the control group. And the difference between those approaches is just um, completely negligible. So it, it really speaks to the robustness of the results that there are several ways in which we could statistically look at the data and they lead to the same answers. Imagine that uh, the San Francisco Bay Area was in a treatment, which means there are no ads and Chicago was in the control where there are ads. Then if you were in Chicago and I'm in San Francisco and we both type in um, white blouse, okay? If eBay were bidding on the keyword white blouse and bidding high enough to appear in the paid search, then you in Chicago would actually see an eBay ad. But in San Francisco, you'd never see an eBay ad. Compare the sales in these two groups. When we still had marketing, paid search advertising on in both of them. And now on a certain day, we're going to turn off all of paid search for those treatment groups. If advertising is indeed a strong driver of sales, you should see the amount of sales plummet by 2%, 10%, 20, depending on how strong advertising is. And if it doesn't have much of an impact, then you're not going to see it plummet. And what we found in the experiment is after 60 days of having this uh, turned off, which is quite a long time, um, the impact on sales was indistinguishably uh, different from zero um, in statistical terms, or as the statistician would say, it is uh, um, 
it is uh, not significantly different from zero. This is true for, say, the top 100 companies, um, and, and it's not true for, you know, smaller companies. So, so first of all, I would like to see a lot more um, of this uh, kind of studies uh, go on.